Today I'm going to show you a quick and dirty method of tweaking the dimensions of certain features of an STL file before you go to print using Mesh Mixer. Let's get started. So a couple of weeks ago, Dustin the Jatman asked me for some help to modify an STL file for a hinge to use on an Ultimaker door, but um, I don't know where that file went. So I downloaded this hinge to demonstrate the concept because I thought it's actually a pretty neat uh, idea and tool within Mesh Mixer that not many people know about. And if you're tight on time, and you need to modify something quickly to make it work. This might be the best way instead of trying to modify the original uh, CAD file, especially if you don't actually have access to it and you might be thinking of reverse engineering it, drawing it again. You can actually sometimes save time by just using this trick. So what I have here is this hinge and what I'm talking about using is the transform tool. So when you select faces in Mesh Mixer, you can click various triangles, let's say these two, and then go to deform and transform and you can move them in space and Mesh Mix will fill in new triangles to match, which is pretty cool, but that's not very practical. But let's say, for example, you want to maybe make these gaps a little bit smaller. You want to mate them differently to something else. I don't know. So before we do that, let's, let's add some face groups. So let's go to edit, uh, generate face groups. That looks great, except, and we can measure how the, what the distance is already uh, currently. So let's go to measure and then between two triangles, yeah, it's good. So 6.3, let's say we wanna reduce that by one millimeter on each side. We can go to select, select that face, and then deform, transform. Make sure S is ticked so you actually have a discrete movement to control it. And then you can just kind of move it like that to work out where you want it. So maybe move it in just by a little bit there, except and then we can maybe select these ones and then deform, transform. Oh, still had them selected. Clear selection. <laughs> Select these ones. And then deform, transform. There you go. Something like that. It's not 100% accurate as you can see, but it can be very handy to modify an STL file slightly. So something that's even more powerful than this would be to get these two holes and move them out further. Say you want more purchase on a piece of plastic. So what you might need to do to do this is add a few more triangles in for Mesh Mixer to work with and I'll demonstrate why. Let's select a box around them like this, click, 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 and then uh, go to deform, transform. So uh, select world, so local or world, select world, so we can pull it like that. Um, and uh, it almost works except you can see here, if I zoom in, it's pulling these triangles across making uh, zero thickness geometry which is not very nice. So let's cancel that. Instead, let's just uh, go to select all and then edit remesh. And let's add some more triangles in. So linear subdivision, let's just chuck it up like that. Just more triangles for mesh mixer to work with. So let's try that again. Select, click around these ones, and then deform, transform, world. And that's much better. So we can now stretch this out as far as we want. And then I guess we could Boolean difference in some extra holes if you wanted to. And you can figure it out exactly what you want to do with it. Also, we can change the thickness of the part very easily. So let's say we want to make it a bit thicker. Uh, I'm going to do face groups again because I want to just easily select that base. So let's go to generate face groups. Looks good. And then select the base. And if you want to make it thicker, deform, transform. And we can just ramp that down and make our part thicker. Now, the one thing this technique can't really do is it can't really easily go backwards. The triangles that are already in place won't organically sort of delete themselves and move out of the way. So imagine if I want to make this thinner, uh, it might work sometimes, but usually you'll get this sort of thing. <laughs> it won't really fix itself. So in this case, if you wanted to make it thinner, I would recommend using the plain cut tool or something like that, which I've shown in previous videos. So thanks for watching guys. Hope you found this quick video on using the transform tool in Mesh Mixer handy. If you want to see future 3D printing tips, tricks and reviews, hit the subscribe button so you can subscribe to make us muse and don't miss any of our future content. I look forward to seeing you again very shortly. Catch you later. Satellites into water. Actually...